Okay, so the purpose of this video is to wrap up our discussion from class of shear stresses in Newtonian fluids. Now, at the end of class, we wrapped up, our, or we, we finished with this example shown here of fluid flow between two parallel plates. This may, for example, uh, represent flow through a pipe. And what we were given, oops, there we go, and we were given the, uh, the flow velocity as a function of y here, where y is measured positive upward from the center line of the flow. And what we determined in class was that according to the equation for shear stress in a Newtonian fluid, tau yx equal to mu times du dy, is that at the center line here, du dy at y equals 0 is equal to 0. In other words, the slope is 0 along the center line, and as a result, oops, tau y x along y equals 0 is also equal to 0. There is no shear stress between uh, fluid particles along the center line. At the wall here, whether it be here or here, it doesn't matter, what we determined is that du dy is a lot. y equals negative h is equal to negative 3u over h, giving us the result that tau y x at y equals negative h is equal to negative mu 3u over h. And those were the two uh, results for shear stress along the center line and at the wall. Now, um, a couple of observations before we move on from this. Uh, note that if we plug in y equals positive or negative h into this equation for the flow velocity, we get zero. Uh, that is to say that the flow speed at the wall is zero. The slope of the flow speed, the du dy, is clearly not zero. As we've seen, it's equal to negative 3u over h. But what we refer to as the no-slip condition dictates that where a fluid meets a boundary, uh, its velocity must match that of the boundary. Since these walls are not moving, their, their velocity is zero, then so must also be the velocity of the fluid. Uh, this is because fluid molecules along the wall tend to stick to the wall. They're, the adhesive force between the wall and the fluid molecules uh, is greater than the cohesive force between fl fluid molecules themselves. Um, so the no-slip boundary condition is shown in this video example right here. Now, what you're going to see is this is a needle, and it's going to be injecting dye along a wall while a fluid velocity, or a fluid flows by with some velocity going from right to left. Let me go ahead and pause this. So, this video, fluid is flowing from right to left, and this was the point where dye was injected. Now note, all of the dye that was injected as the needle drew away from the wall got washed downstream. But the stuff that was injected right at the wall stays put. This is physical evidence of the non-slip boundary condition. The molecules here that follow the, are the molecules of water that are dyed, um, or that are carrying dye along with them, um, match the wall's velocity of zero. So they do not move. They don't get swept away downstream. And this continues, oops, this continues to be the case until uh, somebody comes along with a little spoon-like device, there we go, and actually causes a bunch of turbulence and scrapes away those, uh, uh, those dye-carrying particles. Now there's another implication here to the um, the idea of the no-slip boundary condition. 
and how we work it into our understanding of shear stress. Uh, and this has to do with boundary layers. So I'm sure that you've heard about boundary layers before. But let's consider that we have a wall right here. And let's say we have some fluid with a mean velocity coming in like this. Now, uh, according to the zero or the non-slip boundary condition, let's see here. The uh, the velocity at the wall must be zero, and let's say the velocity at some distance outside of the boundary layer. Let's say that the boundary layer is approximately delta BL thick. Um, there are reasons that uh, it's actually difficult to define how thick a boundary layer is, but we're going to stick with um, assuming we know it right now. So I'm not going to give you the details right now on how we get this, but there's a, a known shape of velocity distributions inside of different kinds of boundary layers, whether they're laminar or turbulent. And so this may be an example of a velocity distribution in a boundary layer. where u is equal to a function of y. Now, note here that inside of the boundary layer, du dy is not equal to 0. That is, uh, there, at every point along the velocity, there is some slope du dy has a value. Whereas outside of the boundary layer, du dy is approximately zero. That is, it's equal to a constant u, which is the free stream velocity. Now the reason this is important is because boundary layers are usually fairly thin. And as we saw in the pipe flow example, wherever du dy is equal to zero, the shear stress is also equal to zero. So what this means is if we take a body, it could be, uh, for example, a we'll say that this is the water line of a ship, and it has some boundary layer developing. We'll call this boundary layer. Then only inside of the boundary layer do we need to worry about fluid shear stresses, because only inside the boundary layer is the velocity of the fluid changing with the distance away from the ship hull. Outside the boundary layer, the fluid velocity is not doesn't have a gradient. It doesn't have a uh, derivative. The, the derivative is equal to zero. So the shear stress is also zero. And this is something that's useful in a lot of uh, computational approaches. You can deal with uh, fluid shear stresses only inside of a small layer, or the boundary layer, and then outside of it you can use much simpler mathematical models that say this fluid has zero viscosity, or this fluid has zero shear stress. So that wraps up our short discussion of shear stresses in Newtonian fluid and offers some extensions into uh, why it's useful to know this when considering boundary layer flow.